how to combine particle systems with custom graphics and make them interact together. Let's draw particles as star constellations, make them scroll across the screen and add an animated creature that the particles interact with. Let's explore some of the most fundamental techniques and then put them together as more unconventional combinations. This is a bonus experimental section of Particle Systems Masterclass. You can download the base source code from part 1 in the resources section below and code with me today. Or if you want to understand every line of code, watch me write it and explain it from scratch. The full playlist is linked below. Click the like if you want me to do more of these and leave a comment with your ideas and thoughts on unique particle effects. Right now our particles are simple circles. What if I want to use an image of a star to represent each particle object instead? It's very simple and drawing and animating images on canvas is often more performance efficient than drawing shapes with code. There are many ways we can bring an image into our project. The simplest way would be to include it in index.html like this. You can download all project images in the resources section below. I place the image inside my project folder, I called it star PNG and I gave it an ID of star. I don't want to draw the image element itself on my web page, so I hide it with CSS. I just want the image to load in memory and I will draw it with JavaScript on canvas. This is a local project, so I will just bring the image in. If you want to put this code somewhere online, you need to wrap all the JavaScript code inside event listener for load event. Or you could also add on load event to body tag. I will show you how to do that at the end. For now, we are working locally, which means the image will be loaded instantly. We don't have to wait for it and I can just bring it inside my JavaScript project as this.image property on particle class. I pointed towards that image using the ID I gave it. Whatever code we put in here, that's what each particle will look like. Right now, we are just drawing a circle representing each particle. I can use built-in draw image method. It expects at least three arguments, the image we want to draw and x and y coordinates where to draw it. I change the radius to a random value between 1 and 7 pixels. Right now, all star images are being drawn at the actual size of the image. I can pass draw image method optional fourth and fifth arguments to define width and height, but that will make them very small. Let's make it a multiple of radius, maybe radius times 8 for width and the same for height. Now we have stars of randomized sizes. It's not very performance efficient to calculate radius times 8 over and over for every animation frame for each particle object. What if I pre-calculate that value just once when we create the particle and then we use that? I will call it image size and it will be radius times 8. Then I use it for width and for height. Nice. Circles on canvas are drawn around a center point. Images and rectangles on canvas are drawn from the top left corner, going right and down. To align the rectangular images over circular stars, I offset their horizontal position by half of image size and I do the same vertically. We don't need this code that draws circles anymore, but we still need the images to be aligned and centered over x and y coordinates to make our physics and push forces act on the center point of our stars. Again, instead of calculating values here for every animation frame, I can pre-calculate that in a constructor. Half image size is image size times 0.5 and we replace it here and here. We have an interactive star system. This looks nice. What if I want to create an illusion that we are flying through space and the stars pass us by? I set Vx to minus 1 to make them all flow to the left. I will remove Vy. We don't need it for this effect. I also need to remove Vy here. The stars are bouncing because of the code here. I will actually need only one of those checks. I want to check if stars moved past the left edge of canvas and if they did, 
I want to reset them behind the right edge so that they can flow over the screen again. If X is less than radius here, set X to effect width here. If you build any games with me, I'm sure you realize how this can be used as a cool interactive background for a side-scroller game, for example. <laughs> the stars just disappear instantly and they reappear here. I want to mask that transition to make it look more natural. The stars are also connected by lines, so I only want to reset them when the star image itself and the line that is potentially connecting it to another star is completely hidden off screen before I make it disappear and reset. That connection distance between stars is defined here, so I turn it into a property on the main effect class to make this value available all over my code base. I have to use this dot here and here. And now I can access max distance property from inside particle class. If particle's horizontal exposition is less than minus image size, minus this dot effect dot max distance only when the entire particle and the line connecting it is completely off screen to the left, only then reset it behind the right edge again, accounting for that image size and for maximum connection distance. We get a gap in between now, which becomes more obvious if I increase max distance. To make it seamless, we need to adjust starting x and y coordinates of our particles. I replace radius with image size. I want the initial horizontal position to be spread slightly further to the right to fill that gap, so I add max distance. Max distance times 2 should do it. I will test it a bit further. I can do max distance times 4, but maybe that's not necessary. I will check that in a bit. Our effect is supposed to be fully responsive, so we need to keep that in mind and make sure we make all these important changes inside our custom reset method. I copy these new X and Y starting coordinates and I replace them here. Now, when I resize, the effect works. I set max distance to 110 pixels. I don't need this gradient code for this effect, so let's delete it. If I push particles off screen vertically, they will be scrolling but off screen. We are only resetting particles horizontal position here. I also needed this line of code to run here, to make sure they return back to the visible canvas area vertically next time they reset, just in case they were pushed off screen by mouse or any other force. If this was my final effect, I would add some randomization here to make sure we don't get static cluster that just scrolls by over and over, but since we will have a creature constantly disturbing these particles as it swims by, I don't need to do that. Let's take image I called whale1 and bring it into the project. All images can be downloaded in the resources section below. You can also use these animated whales in your games if you want. It's a free gift to the students of this course. The art style is compatible with some of my other games, so you can even mix and match. So here we have the particle class. Here is our main effect class. I will create a third class called whale to manage our intergalactic space creature. I have multiple designs ready for you. As you can see, I designed it as a living machine with solar panels for fins. The art style is compatible with my latest space game class, so if you're following that, you can use that whale in there as well. Constructor will expect effect as an argument, and we convert it to a class property, pointing to the space in memory where our main effect object is stored, so that we have access to all properties and methods on the main effect class from inside the whale class. We take advantage of that immediately and we set horizontal x coordinate to effect width value coming from here times 0.5 to put the whale in the middle horizontally. This dot y will be effect height times 0.5 the middle of the canvas vertically. 
This image will point to that new image we just added in index.html. I gave it an ID of whale1. I give it a custom draw method. It will expect context to specify which canvas we want to draw on and also to make sure our classes are self-contained and independent from where they sit in the code base. I call built-in draw image method. We used it already to draw the stars, so we know it expects at least three arguments, the image we want to draw and x and y coordinates where to draw it. We have our new whale class. Let's create an instance of it here and set that instance as this.whale property on the main effect class. It expects effect, so I pass it this keyword here. I need to call it from somewhere to draw it 60 times per second as part of the animation loop. I can do that here inside handle particles method. I take this.whale property from line 75 that holds an instance of whale class and I call draw method we defined up here on line 60. I can see it expects context as an argument, so I pass this context along. Nice, we are drawing our space whale as a static image. Because we are drawing everything on a single canvas element and because I draw whale first and particles after for every animation frame, the whale is drawn behind the particles. If I take this line and I put it here after the particles, the whale will be drawn in front of them. This dot x and this dot y coordinates are exactly in the middle of the screen. But as we said before, with images and rectangles on canvas, x and y coordinates don't define the center point. They define top left corner. If I want my whale to be in the middle of canvas, I have to offset the x coordinate by a half of image width and y coordinate by a half of image height. I can position it slightly off to the left like this. We want this effect to be fully responsive, so I have to make sure these position values are recalculated when width and height of the effect changes. I can delete all this code and instead I set x to new width times 0.4 and y to the new height times 0.5. Now, when I resize my browser window, our custom resize method fires and the whale stays centered. Nice, we have a creature floating in space. There are so many things we can do with this now. Let me show you something.